All right, guys. Uh, welcome to the semifinals game of this month's MSCM GP. Well, the other semi semifinals game because I was also one of the semifinalists who lost the person who is commentating with me today. Hi. Yep. Hi, Pip. So, uh, yeah. Uh, can you tell them to start? Yep. So, uh, Cyber is on Villainy, and Gateways is on Heart Attack. Um, we're seeing Gateway's opener has um, Cosmic Sinkhole and Hand Attack, but Cyber's also on the play, so gets to cast both a Pay Up and a Prying Inquiry before Stasis has Cosmic Sinkhole or P Prying Inquiry available. So, oh, but Cyber uh, has two uh, tap lands to start. Oh, so actually, that, huh, that's very interesting. So we'll get to play a turn two Pay Up, um, which will probably just trade with the Cosmic Sinkhole. Okay, or they can draw in top land right now. See, there we go. So... so there is still a question for Cyber of, do you curve out with Prying Inquiry, or do you still pay up and play around the Cosmic Sinkhole? I feel like Cyber as a player often plays around stuff like Cosmic Sinkhole, and I think you're kind of incentivized to in this spot, but especially because uh, if the pay up resolves, it functionally answers the Cosmic Sinkhole by giving you a treasure. True. Uh, unless Gateways doesn't... Do it. Uh, discard it, or unless Gateways decides to discard what gets named, which might not be Cosmic Synchro. I think if you're in Cyber's position, you either go for the. I think you go for the Prying Inquiry. Um, yeah, you definitely. Because this Exxion is just a dead card; it will get discarded basically no matter what you go for. But if you if you name Prying Inquiry, I think and uh, Gateways for some reason does choose to pitch it, then your hand is safe next turn, which is huge. And then you can prying inquiry around cosmic sinkhole. Um, yeah, so. although that sets cyber yeah, back so turn. Treasure. Oh, treasures gets made. Okay, yeah, that. Uh, um, what's it's also mm -hmm. what's gateways doing now? Uh, I think I would proactively be casting a prying inquiry so your opponent doesn't untap into villainy. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I mean, technically, you could also hold up the cosmic for a villain. No, wait, you, the opponent has a yeah. treasure. Okay. Yeah, that's that's what I mentioned of the payup functionally also answering the cosmic sinkhole. If it was still old cosmic sinkhole, less so. But um, Heart of Zadina is also nice. Uh, you now have your mid game plan to structure around the stealth for treasures. Prying inquiry, I think, wants to take prying inquiry here, but Not then your the opponent gets all the villainy, which would suck. So I yeah, okay, take you, the villainy. Yeah, you always take villainy here. I'm I'm not sure about always, but I. I don't know. I think it's weird because if your hand gets prying inquiry and they take your delve for treasures, you're kind of spinning your wheels here. Well, but then so is the opponent, right? Like this is a matchup where you can't afford to go long. Yeah, that's true. It, it depends on and who you also, favor. I'm pretty sure Biohazard is a wind con. It, it just gets killed by Pith Bolt, so not really. Well, that it, it eats up a Pith Bolt, right? Is there anything else in Gateways deck that wants to be Pith Bolt? I think there's some trends, but like I, I don't know. Y it's not a win con, is my point, I guess. Um, I'm pretty for sure for Cyber, the correct answer is, is Delve for Treasures here, but also drawing the accident kind of sucks. Hey, I mean, I it's only fair you that you draw one after your opponent drew one in their opener, and there goes Delve for Treasures. So going ex as exactly as you planned. Uh, both players do have a clue lying around. I mean, so Gateways can actually try to jam Biohazard, uh -huh. which blows up both clues. Is that worth doing? Uh, honestly, maybe with this Monument of Queens draw. Yeah, I mean, like... You... Oh, wait, Enterpraxia's Endeavor also checkmates Monument of Queens, and, uh, Gateways does know Cyber has that. Ah, yeah. I mean, Cause... like, so Gateways just passes right now, uh, holding up Cosmic. I guess you end up turning Crack the Clue. Yeah. So um, Cyber draws the questions... Low Maid's Intervention. So that's also a win con, and it's a yeah. win con that can't easily be, uh, one for one, or answered one by one for one. Yeah, it... It's basically a lot of inevitability, but Cyber does actually need to be able to cast spells um, to recur it. Well, they need to um, cast spells, but they don't need to resolve spells to recur it. Yeah, but they need targets for their spells. I don't think you're going to, like, pith a random clue token, for you instance. You can pith -wilt your own things if you really want to. I don't think you're going to. I mean, is there any pith targets in Gateway's deck? Other than the clue token, the biohazard, I think Gateway's might be on Intrepid. Uh, they're on one Intrepid and two Gate of Realms. Yeah, so, but also just like... Warp Sped! Oh, yeah, maybe that's a reason to not run it out so early. I mean, I think you're fine. Like, uh, it is technically suboptimal for you, but like, I... 
I don't know what else you're doing. I guess you're like cracking a clue with the mana. Yeah, I, I feel think like I would this, that's to crack a clue rather than Salomes, but yeah. So now Gateways gets to crack a clue and then Biohazard to blow up everything on the opponent's side. Well, in that case, Cyan just in response taps the Fungal Mire, taps the treasure, sacks uh, clue. True, uh, but but that taps Cyber out, which does not matter, but it feels yeah. nice. <laughs> Uh, wait, how's Gate down, Gateways down to 11 already? Uh, then Cyber Shock only... Shock Lands, uh, Murmuring Depths has tapped like three times already. Prying Inquiry. Right, Prying Inquiry also loses you life. I keep forgetting that part of the card. Cause it... it was added very late into the card's existence. <laughs> really? Like post-release or pre-release? Oh yeah. Like what? it was added in the first May Madness patch, if I remember, which was that... like a year after the Unraveling that came out. That feels like a really weird way to nerf the card. It was because the card is like strictly better than anything remotely that had been played before. And with Lose One Life, it is at least conceivably like more comparable to Agonizing Remorse. Um, but it mostly is in there not as like a we want to nerf this card because it's too good, but more of a this card is too like this card is on its face too high value and we would like it to be less insultingly like good. True. Yeah, so it's like the. Uh, it, it, I, I think it's like something that words it, uh, Cannon Magic isn't doing as much recently. Oh, the opponent also got a Quartz Bed. Uh, does Quartz Bed hit anything in Gateway's deck? Um, uh, Beyond All Horizons, yeah, that thing has Coalesce. And other than that, I don't think it hits anything. Yeah, I think it's just hitting uh, me. It's... I, I'm not sure why you would hit the... Does Gateway's have anything that cares about number of types in Yard? No. It, so, I, it's... The only thing this thing is hitting the is... I over the Prying Inquiry. Interesting. Yeah, I guess Cyber just needs to play out tapped for so to hit land drops. I also don't super get why Gateways didn't play Monument of Queens last turn. Like, uh, there's no reason to run it out, right? Well, what's the downside? Uh, good point, yeah. Because then they could have just end of turn there, like, put a counter on it. Which, you're in a spot where you never want to really activate it because you know that there's an Apraxia's Endeavor in hand, and that is literally designed to one-shot Monument of Queens. Uh, wait, what did Gateways play instead of Monument last turn? Uh, the Swamp. Oh, I guess that means that you're no longer take damage off the Murmuring Falls, but... Oh yeah, right, right. I mean, you're at 11, I mean, it's like, your opponent does have Salome's Intervention in their deck. It, it you're, could... you're saving one life by doing it that way, though. Does that, like, change the Salome Intervention Clock? Nope. Does it change Salome plus... Villainy clock or something? I mean, it depends on how many villainy procs you get, so I don't know. I mean, you're dead to three Salomites plus one villainy proc if you. No, well, you're already dead to that. Yeah, so I, 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 yeah, I don't think it's like a specific breakpoint. I think it was just did this because of a, I would like to stop taking damage from this land and Monument of Queens is not going to do anything versus my opponent, which is a fair take, I suppose, but. Find happiness and misery. Cyber is going up on cards now. Yeah, gateways can't contest this. And uh, so Cyber is milling themselves. Does Cyber have Graveyard Synergy? I mean, they have Salome's. Well, yeah. Have... I, I wonder if Cyber just casts an X in here. <laughs> just like immediately proccing to find happiness. I think the answer is no. Um, I think you just keep all the eggs in your pocket for when villainy comes down. Ooh, Dead Man's Party is huge. Ooh. But you also know your opponent has Cosmic Sinkhole and Biohazard, so you're not running out the Dead Man's Party yet. You're just holding... I think Dead Man's Party to trade one for one with the Biohazard is going to be, or two for one, I guess, is going to be good. So, is it two for one? You can blow. You up play. Them. You play Dead Man's Party. They play Biohazard. You have to pit wilt the Biohazard. The Dead Man's Party has been destroyed. It's just a two for two. They cast one card. You lost two. Yeah. Yeah. I. I guess that. That's fair. That's uh, more lands. Um. That's not great, right? Uh, I mean, you have Heart of Zadina, which gives you infinite mana. You you have Heart and Monument of Queens. Like, it's kind of hard to complain about flooding out on lands. Um, I mean, like, you could just... Well, you, you can play out Monument and Heart and then start, just start pumping a bunch of mana into Heart. I mean, mo a yeah, bunch of mana like, into Monument. And then just, like, also hold up a bunch of mana for Sinkhole on the Endeavor. Yeah, like, eventually you get to the point where you can probably beat an Endeavor. And also, even if you can't, you do want to, like, eventually force them to use the Anapraxias. Um, uh, I wonder if Gateways is trying to hide the heart. Does Cyber's deck play Mirror Gate or anything? Uh, no, I don't think so. 
I, I don't think there's anything main board that can deal with art. Uh, Cyber draws and other and Praxias. So, cast the Dead Man's Party, get your second half of Find Happiness and Misery. I mean, so Cyber's, Cyber knows about Biohazard, right? They're not going to run more things into it. I mean, it's your only... It does proc your Find Happiness, I guess, and you do need to clear the Biohazard eventually. So, right. I, I, I get the Ooh, thought process. Cosmic Sinkhole. Uh, interesting. Yeah, doesn't Cyber just pay? Is Gateways really going to cast two Cosmic Sinkholes to answer this Dead Man's Party? Apparently. Huh. I mean, it Even does though, tap Cyber out. Yeah, but Cyber doesn't have counter magic, and Gateways has this. So is ba Gateways just going to slam Biohazard? No, but Gateways, I'm pretty sure, knows that Cyber has Pith Wilt. Yeah, that play makes no sense. Uh, I mean. Okay, Gateways can, like, jam a Monument of Queens next turn, swing big, but that seems very mid. Maybe they want Cyber to run something else out into Biohazard. Oh, well, we call Forgotten Aeon bails them out. Well, I, I mean, it doesn't even. Like, they, they would be up on cards if they just let that resolve and then cast a biohazard. Well, uh, it's, it makes it slightly less bad for gateways to make that play compared to if they didn't draw it. It, it is true that them drawing a draw four card does make it less bad for them to go two for one on a random card that they already had answered in hand. But that, yeah, that, that play makes no sense. Maybe Gateways yeah. didn't want to jam Biohazard that turn or something. I mean, look. Can, look. Can we should just fucking count their lands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven green. That's one, two, three. Yeah. Yeah, that's enough mana. But also, you can play lands in between that sequencing. So I don't know why you tapped like this either. Uh, okay, I think uh, Gateways is realizing something. Are they going to uh, they, they want to produce slightly different mana. Oh. Or they have a basic swamp. Yeah. Um, but I, I feel like they're playing a little bit fast and loose, and I, I don't know if that's just, like, nerves, or it's late, or whatnot, but... I think it's probably because it's late, uh, or, I mean, I don't know their time zones, so I wouldn't be able to tell. They're in the Midwest, so it's 12.31 for them? PM or AM? Is it in the middle it, of the night for them? It's, yeah, it's, it's after midnight. Okay. The, the Midwest yeah. US. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah, and I mean, like, okay, you Ooh. praying and query your opponent... You get to answer one of their the handful of okay. A, you didn't know you're gonna draw into this, and B, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. Response, and that's going to be excellent. Killing the recall. I mean, like, I don't know how much you care about that because, like, you also could just pith wilt it on your turn. Like, I, <laughs> I don't know if you need to respond. You're giving up a treasure to do so, and you're gaining nothing. So, okay, whatever. You want to get value out of all your cards, I guess. They that that no, Ricky, that is not an answer. <laughs> because they can just take another card now? Like there's no there's no value gained. Oh, they they prank inquiry me and hit my exit. Cool. I untap and pith wilt. Something like, something mana efficiency. It's mana efficiency that is permanently sacrificing a resource. You want to give your opponent less You want to give your opponent less hand information. Also not a good explanation here. They still get the hand information. And so Pithwood gets taken. Oh. Well, no, no, I think it's because Cyber wants to make up for the fact that Gateway also wasted a bunch of their resources on something that they need to be wasted on. Okay, yeah, no, you have an explanation here. What? All right, so Whisperwood can recur a villainy. I don't think Cyber should do that. I hope we're not about to watch them do that. Why? Is it because of Biohazard? Yeah, because your opponent has fucking Biohazard and a bajillion mana. And you know about the Biohazard. They're... They can't, no, they're just, they're milling over Exent, right? I, I yeah, can't tell what they're doing. Yeah, they're milling over and villainy and the land. Like, what what is the advantage of doing this? Of doing what? Whisperwood? Maybe, maybe Cyber doesn't know that their opponent has Biohazard? No, they definitely what, know. What, what, they saw that it. Was, that was in one of the earlier hand reveals. Maybe they closed their window and forgot? I mean, I always keep the window off to the side, so I Man, wouldn't if they forget. Had... But... God. Because, like... Why not, why not pay up first? And I mean, if you pay up, you can't also whisper wood and cast the villainy this turn. But you don't want to cast the villainy this turn without the ability to proc it. Actually, yeah, they should have kept the treasure so that they could proc it with Exant instead. Well, then then this turn they would be. Well, yeah, you're right because your opponent would take the pith will. Or maybe Gateways takes the Exant instead for some reason. Why would Gateways takes the Exant rather than the card that fucking answers both the creature and the biohazard? Because Cyber clearly knew something that we didn't because. Cyber. Okay. Honestly, <laughs> it's, the only discipline move here is if Cyber picks up Prying Inquiry. Well, let's see if they uh, make the correct play. 
Because I, I don't think there's a world in which recurring the villainy is legitimate. And Cyber even knows that there's a biohazard. Why are we looking? <laughs> oh, God. I think Cyber just, like, fucking drew the whisper wood and was so excited to draw it that they just slammed it. And now we're just like, hmm. Yeah. Maybe maybe this isn't optimal. Hey, hey, Especially I, I, since, like, if you, if you go fully shields down with Anapraxia's Endeavor, your opponent can hit you for a metric fuck ton with Monument of Queens. Oh yeah, you should like, have saved Exxon for one, two, three, Monument. Four. And Anapraxia's Endeavor always kills Monument, so oh, it's yeah, definitely right. fine. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 lands. That's... and mana. 12 mana, 12 mana, 3 mana. Okay, so Monument of Queens next turn is hitting for um, 4 damage, which doesn't sound like a lot, but next turn it swings for... It. the turn after it swings for 8. Well, so you need to have the answer to that. You have plenty of answers, you just need to make sure that they connect. Or you, yeah, like you, you have, to, you have to make sure that you keep them up. Okay, so it recurs the prying inquiry, which is the correct thing to recur. It still doesn't make any sense why Cyber did it this way, but also I think you... Yeah, because you would have wanted to first hit gateways with the payup and then with the prying inquiry, ideally, but now it's pointless to do so because they know you have the prying inquiry. I, I think they're still going for that line. I mean, I guess it's fine to pay up before prying inquiry because or... you get like more force your opponent's hand, but like whatever. It's six of one, half a dozen of the other. I think there's also some logic behind holding pay up to have something to proc a top decked villainy. You know, you could have, uh, you could also just pay up and hold two up, hold up two math for endeavor on the monument. Maybe Is that ever correct? Maybe. I mean, pay up. I guess pay up's just never going to hit. Uh, in that case, because the opponent's just going to discard exunt, and you don't care about the extra treasure at that point. Yeah, I mean, like the extra treasure is fine, but. Okay, so gateways, unless they top deck like a you're dead now spell, that is not a you're dead now spell. Um, I mean, gateways now can crash in for four damage this turn. Uh, can, Next turn, uh, can they also keep up the clue if they do that? No, they could crash in for three and keep up the clue. I think keeping up the clue is more point. important. I guess they no longer have an answer to villainies off the top, but like cursory glance, upon, you yeah, I guess so, but like. Cursory Glance, I think you want to use that to tag Anapraxias, but I don't know. Crack the Clue first is fine. Yeah, you, makes sense. in case you draw land. Wait, no, it doesn't matter because you have lands. Another egg on Hilarious. Well, that's bad. Uh, don't, don't worry, that's fine. Uh, Gateways just needs to get better top decks next turn. So I guess they probably just dump all the... Uh, they probably want to keep up Cursory Glance, so can they... How much mana can they dump into Monument and still keep up Cursory Glance? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, they can hit for two. Yeah, I, I mean, that's probably fine. I guess they haven't play, played a land yet, right? Or did they draw the island this turn? No. So they can play out a land, which then means they can probably bash in for... I don't think they want to lose life here. Like, life does matter. Okay, now they're but dead they're too. To gain, they're about to gain more life off the Monument of Queens. Fair. I don't know. Any, any game state that's going to involve Cyber starting to burn... Gateways out is going to take multiple turns. Hey, you'll know if Cyber is going to top deck uh, generally plus two uh, the low maze interventions. Right. If, if if Cyber draws three cards during their draw step, I think Gateways should immediately call a judge. <laughs> Especially because Cyber trying to put all of those onto the stack, there's not enough mana, so definitely call a judge. And you're a judge, right? So it's even more yeah. convenient because they don't have to wait. So true. It's even going to be on video, so you don't even have to. Go through a chat lock. Uh, go through a chat lock to do an investigation. So they, oh, they right. Since mine has vigilance, gateways can swing for three and still keep up cursory glance. Yep. Cyber draws. Yes, well, uh, no targets right now. They're yeah. I don't know. Cast the pay up. Gateways complains about <laughs> anapraxias. Is it is it cheating or <laughs> is it outside I, info? I would... Right. Yeah, I was going to say, is it outside info? But no, if one of the players says it, I can verify. Yes, it is explicitly because Mako wants to kill Monument of Queens. <laughs> <laughs> it is not there as an incidental thing. <laughs> it is also not there for Herald of Oblivion, as funny as that interaction is. Cool, a free treasure. It could matter. Like, if Cyber somehow finds card draw and then does, like, three or villainy into oh, two yeah, slow maze. This is why when I'm playing villain index i usually like to find some source of like burst card draw because as good as like find happiness and misery is at like you know a nice two for one villainy is kind of a card draw engine 
you have this card selection in the form of Whisper Woods Exploration and two for one in the form of Crying Inquiry. Like, the deck isn't bad at card advantage, but it means you have these longer turn. Yeah, this is so fucked for you. Well, I guess it's not so fucked because Gateways doesn't have another better tutor target. Does Gateways have an Al Rafa in the deck? I assume so. Uh, let me check. Because if so, Cyber's kind of fucked here. Uh, they have the Reba. Oh, yeah, Cyber's, Cyber's turbo fucked here. Why is Gateways tap? I guess, yeah, you're not going to swing with the Monument of Queens this turn, so it doesn't matter. Because, like, this Gate Gated Realms just gets answered by a Pith Bolt, but Cyber does not beat the Nereva. So, going back to the topic of villainy decks, so you said Burst Card Draw. What Burst Card Draw is there in villainy colors? Um, There is a random card in uh, Karina's Explorations that is, choose three, you may choose the same mode more than once, and it's, you draw a card and lose one life, or target opponent discards a card and loses one uh, life. What's and the card two, called again? Two and black black. Um, let me pull it up. I have it in some villainy list somewhere. It is called Hit the Books. Hit the Books. Don't call it in chat, please. Okay, fine. I'll call it in... Uh... Okay, this is where I wish that Cocktrice had a whisper function so I can just send messages to myself. That it... You could just open up the deck tab? Yeah, but then it screws up... The... <laughs> but, but then... Uh... I have to go in and manually get rid of the thing that's covering the timer. Mm, okay, that's fair. But anyways, yeah, I'll do that just for you guys. I'll, I'll go in and spend 10 seconds doing some video editing. Cocktrace does also have a whisper function, by the way. Wait, it does? Like, in chat? Uh, you can you can private chat. Oh, I guess private chat doesn't help because... Yeah, like, I, don't know if you can I want to be able to send a message just to myself in chat. Oh, yeah. yeah, hit the bucks. It's 4 mana, which is... I feel like you probably want three something in, in the same I, mass slot for that. If you want to be drawing more than two cards, you're probably not going to find a good three card draw spell at three mana in this format. Like, well, really, there's no like three three mana pay a bunch of life draw three cards. I mean, okay, there there is one card that Cyber discovered after this GP. I discovered it before, but didn't mention it because um, I didn't know anyone else was bringing villainy. But it's. Um, Two and a black, draw X cards and lose X life, or X the number of lands in your graveyard, which right now would be three. Huh. But I mean, if you have a decent amount of self mill and a, a decent amount of fetches, then I guess that is viable. Is there like nothing in the splash co in the uh, black splash colors that draws you burst cards? I mean, probably there is. Like, is is there some random bug card that puts you up a bajillion cards? Almost certainly. That costs like three or less. I also feel like. Yeah, but I also just don't know how important it is. Okay, Cyber um, is snapping off stuff in response to Nereba. Pith wilting the Gate of Realms. That makes sense. Uh, is Gate of Realms free right now? Yeah, yes. it is. Okay. Uh, so what can Cyber draw here to catch them back up uh, after Gateways like com you, complete they, If they do not have an answer to the Nereba, they, they have lost this game. I don't think they have an answer to the Nereba in their deck anywhere. Then they're fucked. Yep. This delve, this delve for treasures draws roughly a bajillion cards, and then Gateways casts a, uh, you know, you lose seven life, or you lose two life seven times, and Cyber implodes. You don't, you don't even need Master of the Veil here, right? You just out-resource them. Yeah, you also could just keep tapping this Nereba, and your opponent loses the game, too. Or you can keep, uh, no, Mime of Queens doesn't work here. Uh, do you have backup alignment for after the first one gets killed? I would assume not. You also can just, beyond all horizons, put a giant giant into play. That is excellent. Yeah, your opponent doesn't have an Axion anymore. They could have an Axion. You have a cursory glance. True. <laughs> Gateways is doing math right now. I assume they're trying to see, can I delve for treasures for a large portion of the remainder of my library and still have enough to uh, cast a 9-mana Master of the Veil, killing my opponent instantly? I'm assuming the answer is probably... Some variant of yes. 11. So they have 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. They have 20 mana if they they play out this Grim Bastion untapped, 19 mana otherwise. Um, they need to cast at least a 9 mana um, Mastery of the Veil. So they can either Delve for Treasures, X equals 8 or 9, depending on if they uh, put this Grim Bastion untapped or not. Um, or nine, they would see, let's see. 18 cards? They would see uh, roughly 60% of their library. Um, I don't know how many copies of Mastery of the Veil they run. How many? They run two copies. You are pretty fucking likely to see two copies within the top 18 cards of your deck. Uh, let's, let's see how likely. I'm going to boot up the hypergeometric. 
And yeah, gateways notes that you can't gain life off end of practice if you don't have a target in yard. Okay, you're an eighty. You're an eighty-five percent chance to see one in the top um, eighteen cards. If so, if you look at the top twenty, you're in roughly a ninety percent chance. So, like, chance of pretty likely. It's the chance of you, you getting a keepable hand if you or getting a hand that has a keepable uh, number yeah, I mean, of lands. That's the other thing is, even if you even if you fucking miss, you have nine mana left over and infinite cards in hand. So I don't know. You should be fine. I agree with the decision to shock in this Grim Bastion, but we're also we're rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic. This game is over. We are wasting our time on how it is over. So do you want to just go to sideboarding now? Sure. Let me let me open up what the player sideboards look like. Okay. Let it's me also. God, if this one goes on for another like four turns in the background. I'm gonna lose my mind. But um, for gateways, let me op also. Open I'd probably up. board in the celestial banishments and maybe the trauma spikes. I don't know if Cyber can beat a trauma spike. Well, I mean, okay. So yeah, what does trauma spike hit? Villainy. Your opponent is now down to two Valdez, two Salome's intervention, and a monument of queens as it, as win cons. Good point. Yeah. So yeah, definitely board that in, um, especially because Gateways has um, Lotus Barons as a potential answer to um, opposing Monument of Queens and a bunch of ways of accessing it. Also, yeah, Cyber, I don't know what the fuck you board in. Uh, two more copies of Salome's Intervention and Prey? Uh, seal the Tombs? What are you sealed the Tombing? Mastery, I guess, if or just some nope. random <laughs> high-value stuff. Well, that's guys. <laughs> Oh man, do, do don't don't board and seal the tombs because your opponent is running cards, and seal the tomb is good against cards. Okay, forbidden treasure then against the coalesce guys. Sure, forbidden treasure seems fine. I do not like this matchup for cyber at all. So is is that like good for you in terms of the tournament standing? I have no idea about what my relative win rate would be versus cyber stack versus gateways. What I will say is I know that cyber is specifically playing more copies than Anapraxias to beat up on Phoenix. And Gateways seems to be believing in two copies of Seal the Tomb. Uh, Gateways is right, resolving the Delphi Treasures right now, which is always fun to look at because it's like playing, uh, like what's that casino game where you uh, do <laughs> that sort of thing? No idea, but is Gateways complaining about missing? <laughs> That's not an issue, dude. You just drew a bajillion cards. You can play a Gate of Realms and your opponent has no recourse. Yeah, You're but... holding 15 counter spells. Yeah, but you don't win the game this turn, which means you need to discard the ha hand sides, which will take... Gill issue. Just discard the lands. But, and the Exeunt. But, but maybe you want and... lands for nope. later? Yeah. It, 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 I understand a degree of Gateways' frustration, but it's also like, come on. Yeah, because you have to pass the turn to the opponent, which means you need to wait now. You also... I, honestly, I'm in the spot here if I'm Gateways of... You can just show your opponent your hand and say, you don't beat this. This is over. Let's go to game two. It's like, your opponent needs to beat triple counterspell. <laughs> your opponent doesn't beat triple counterspell if you untap, because you swing with a bajillion monument of queen's size, and your opponent implodes. Well, I mean, Cyber can also just, like, ask for a concession right now. Or, like, Cyber can just concede now, like... Yep, I agree. What's the rule that lets you concede at any time? Is it 103.6? Uh, do you just have these no. sorts of things off? Do you just no know one one three point six is uh, mulliganing? Um, you actually memorize the numbers for the rules, or is it just like you look at up I when just, you need to? I just uh, know that one because um, I've referenced it in flavor text. One hundred four point three a. I've I've made a joke on a couple of stacks pieces about like stating legal president one oh one oh four point three a. And it's worded like a player may concede the game at any time. Yeah, basically. The actual wording are 104.3a. A player can concede the game at any time. A player who concedes leaves the game immediately. That player loses the game. Very concise. Covers all of the potential questions. Including Platinum Angel, right? Yes. Okay, it's Cyber's turn again. Uh, Gateways just discarded to hand size, it seems like. Oh no, they discarded a Beyond All Horizons. Man. There's no, there is no top deck that solves your problem here, my friend. There is no card in the universe strong enough to solve your issues. And the practice endeavor. Uh, Excel your yard. Hey, it, sure. It, it's value because it hits the coalesce. Oh, never mind then. Yeah, like I guess this is correct to both cast it, and I guess it's correct to counter hit. That's at some point you gotta recognize what what because you saw your opponent flip the cards into their hand. 
You know most of those cards. You know how unbeatable your opponent's hand is. I mean, also, there's a Queen of Realms. There's a Monument of Queens that you cannot answer because they can hold up enough counter pressure to beat your two Anapraxias. I mean, I think Cyber is going with Never Give Up as their strategy. Yeah, sure. I agree that that is what they're doing. They're going to take three damage from Gate of Realms. Then Gateways can untap, deal them another three. They're down to seven life. This Monument of Queens is going to grow to be, I don't know, probably a 2020 or something, and then sh kill them. I don't think it can go to 2020. No, it cannot go to 2020. I'm exaggerating. Okay, um, there you go, finally. I'm, I'm not sure the casting... Okay, you know what? Players have the right to cast their spells. That is also probably in the rules somewhere. <laughs> probably. So, yeah, now they're family, they finally start uh, sideboarding for reals. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we've already talked about how Gateways has way more options than Cyber post-board, so I'm assuming Gateways is favored in this matchup. Um, I'm also going to briefly note, uh, so 601.2 um, says that to cast a spell is to take it from where it is, usually the hand, put it onto the stack, and pay its cost so that it will eventually resolve and have its effect. Casting a spell includes proposal of the spells, rules 601.2a through d, and determination and payment of costs, rules 601.2f through h. To cast a spell, a player follows the steps listed below in order. A player must be legally allowed to cast a spell to begin this process. See Rule 601.3. If a player is unable to comply with the requirements of a step listed below while performing that step, the casting of the spell is legal. The game returns the moment to put the game returns to the moment before the casting of the spell was proposed. See Rule 730, handling illegal actions. Uh, yeah. So. so yeah. Uh, if I'm gateways, I'm probably boarding in these trauma spikes. Um. Maybe, honestly, board in the stale and non-sellables, too. Like, your opponent can't beat you if you gain 7 life, realistically. I mean, they also can't beat you if uh, you just trauma spike all their villainies, or you get yeah, Arabian so to play. I think, if, I think in terms of cutting cards, I probably cut the three uh, Exeants. Definitely. Me, hmm, hmm, what else do I want to cut? Probably the two Cursory Glances. Really? I mean, Cursory Glance hits everything, right? So basically, the question is, you, you cut the three Exeants, those are easy. Um, and you get to board in three copies of Trauma Spike. The question is, do you want the fourth Trauma Spike, and do you want the stand on the sailables? I, um, if I was in their position, I would choose no, because that's more decisions to make, and I don't want to make that many decisions. Mm, Making decisions is hard, especially when it comes to cutting cards when boarding. No, oh, true. Gateways boarded really fast. Um, over on Cyber side, I think you're boarding in, like, Forbidden Treasures and Sloam's Intervention. Yeah. And I don't think you have... And, like, you're boarding out the Exeunts and Abandoned by the Gods, so that's minus four cards. Um, so you're going up currently two off Salomes and two Forbidden Treasures, so maybe you find two more, but or you just say, no, it's fine. Like, my other cards are fine. Cyber yeah, still has Exeunt in, in their deck. It's it's wild. because I mean, I guess you have to keep Exeunt just to respect the Intrepid, but that seems loose. Um, and I guess it's also good to be able to cast after a Villainy. Uh, does it pistol kill also kill Intrepid? Yeah, that's true. I also just like thinking about it and looking through it. Like this deck is so win con light and like not diverse with its win cons. When Gateways is literally just playing the list that won last GP, like Ga Gateways has pay ups in this list. Yeah, a one of pay up in this deck list. Huh. And they the Veldad's low, uh, getting rid of Cosmic Cinco. Uh, we can we see one that of... Gateways has sealed the tomb. I mean, Gateways chose to discard that uh, Cosmic Sinkhole. Seal the Tomb is fine in Gateways' situation because Cyber will probably mill past a villainy or you'll counter it. Um, but, like, I, I don't know. I probably would have boarded in Trauma Spikes before Seal the Tombs, but it really does just boil down to, like, I think when... I think people need to be thinking about effects like Trauma Spike a little bit more often when building control decks. I usually try to have a much more varied win-con base, and I think Cyber just has a total of, like, I mean, I guess uh, maybe Sloan's. So gateways, it's countering Sloan's intervention. Sure, whatever. Like, <laughs> I, I, I mean, like, why? Is 3 life really that important? I mean, no. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> matter, though. Like, I, I don't know. I'm just kind of sitting here being like, it's so fucking over. I think you might A have... little bit shocking to not see Seal the Tomb being fired off on the Sloan's, but I think that's correct. Like, you want... Yeah, okay, Cyber's drawn a million lands. Oh, that's why. So, uh, gateways no gateways didn't cast pay up yet never mind i was like gateways knows that cyber's hand sucks but no gateways just knows that on an instinctive level yeah they, they can they feel the aura from they feel the energy from how cyber's playing right now and they just instinctively know that cyber 
and it's garbage. Because I think like one of the few ways that Cyber wins this type of matchup is curving hand attack, hand attack into like villainy. Your opponent not having an answer to villainy when it resolves, and you just like I don't know, like how do you win from that point? Actually, <laughs> maybe maybe how Cyber wins. Maybe the answer to this question is Cyber answers Gateways' counter magic that can stop them from resolving a Salome, then casts a Salome, draws several cards, something happens. Oh, that's another. That's another land. That's really bad. I don't know. Cyber's approaching Salome Mana. That's exciting. You mean like actual Salome and not the intervention? Yeah, the deck runs two copies of actual Salome. Oh, right, right. I forgot. I forgot the, that. Wait, is it not a win con? Why are you it complaining about? It does not about... have anything that says win the game on it. No. I mean, how does it... the opponent win the game if Salome sticks? Uh, Monument of Queens. Okay, fair. Uh, I mean, cast, it, cast in the Astro of the Veil. X equals a billion. Okay, but like in most matchups, Salome is a win con. Salome is an engine, and like Salome answers the board and draws you cards. But if you're specifically worried about your opponent like trauma spiking you or seal the tombing you and removing the things that actually say you win the game on them, Salome does not say you win the game on it. It, it gives you enough cards to hopefully try to claw out some sort of victory. But you're drawing cards that don't do anything. Like that's the thing is if your opponent just answers the things that actually win the game, they don't need to answer Salome. Right. And pay up hits the only f legal target. <laughs> well, pay up hits Exian and Cyber discards a land. And Gateways gets a treasure. I mean, and then cast beyond to, all horizons. You can just pitch Eggdon here. I mean, the land could, the treasure could matter. Gateways cast beyond all horizons. Yeah, the, the punish here is your opponent top decks felony. Well, let's hope so Cyber does every... that so we have more content. Yep, I agree. Um, Beyond Home Horizons, so that's three mana, so that's four, five... Alright, Cyber, please draw something turn. good, for content's sake. If Gateways draws a land, they can flash back the Beyond next turn. Uh, that dies to Exon, so that's fine. Yeah, it just gets you your Monument of Queens. <laughs> Which also dies to Exon, like, once... Not the... There's only one Exion. <laughs> Maybe Cyber finds it... another one. Oh, Cyber has a Corpse Bed in hand. Oh. <laughs> Cyber should Corpse Bed the fucking Beyond All Horizons. Yeah, the... good idea. Cast Salome's intervention or whatever. Uh, okay, so right now, like, uh, or, or you wait because if you on your next turn, so let's say Gateway is flashed now, you want to stop them from flashing back beyond all horizons. Yes. Oh, but if Cyber has played out the Flooded Morass. Okay, so I guess what Cyber is thinking is they can, like, if Gateway plays out a beyond all horizons, Cyber gets to untap and play Salome's plus Axiant, which recurs their other Salome's, right? Um, so that's neat. But if Gateways does get to cast this Beyond All Horizons, I don't know how Cyber beats a Monument of Queens? Uh, okay, Cyber decides to change their mind. Yeah, okay. Okay, you play Valdez here, right? Just to have something on yeah, board? Yeah, and Gateways... I, I don't know, actually, wait. Casting that Beyond All Horizons doesn't make any fucking sense, because Gateways tapped off of having counter magic up versus the onboard Valdez. <laughs> they, did, they did that with perfect information of Cyber's hand, also. It's still fine. Uh, I mean, Gateways is, is still super favored right now, right? I mean, yes, in a very like abstract sense of they have way better top deeper. decks. Right? Lines here are fine. What? Cyber, play, play Valdez. Come on, play Valdez. Oh, no, we're gonna see Salome's plus Axiom. No, play Valdez, Cyber. Cyber, play Valdez. You know your opponents just on counter magic and seal the tomb, right? Because Cyber's cast and hand attack spell this game. No, Cyber hasn't. Okay, so. Cyber is making inform an uninformed decision of about like how to beat what you could be in your opponent's hand. But I play think Valdez, I'm play Valdez. But there we go. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So my apologies, Cyber. I forgot that they don't have perfect hand information. Only Gateways does. Gateways <laughs> play Valdez. It's hard because like if you play the Valdez and your opponent just untaps and exits him, you feel bad. I guess. No, it's fine because also Valdez spends your mana better, right? Valdez spends mana better. You and you still can just cast Axion and Salome's intervention next turn. Yeah, I don't know. This play doesn't make sense to me. Oh, and wait, Cyber is not I'm even not casting the Axion. Okay, so why why are you holding up the Axion? Remind me, I guess. Jesus Christ, it's so fucking over, man. <laughs> yeah, now now Gateways plays out the Nere, but draws two cards every turn for the rest of the game, and Cyber's dead. <laughs> hey, maybe Gateways gets greedy and decides to seal the Salome's this turn instead of drawing with Nereba. They have the ability to do both, I think. Really? Uh... No, they don't. They don't. I, I miscounted. If that was a snow-covered swamp, 
if we still had snow covered lands, they could. But you know, it's twenty twenty four. We we don't have snow covered lands anymore. We yeah, we haven't for like four plus years or something insane. It's only three year plus years, right? Quotation only happened in two thousand twenty one. Ooh, okay, top yeah, deck that Salome. Also... Uh, that's not useful right now. But you know, if Cyber went Valdez, like Gate was would be forced to answer that thing eventually, right? So that might have given yeah. Cyber a chance to get Salome down on board. Yeah. I mean, actually, Cyber they can cast the Valdez right now and play around Portal Fracture. Yeah, so that's neat. Actually, yeah, good point. Uh, but they should have done that last turn if that's the play, play they were trying to make. No, I'm. I mean, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and yes, it's been three and a half years. Only three and a half, a quote unquote only. I joined right after quotation happened, so I never got to play with any of the free quotation card. No, no, I I joined on the GP that quotation happened, right? You on the was, last GP you, before quotation. No, because when you joined, we we had already experienced quotation because rug rug flat. Oh, um, I, I remember playing against the no, you're you're right. Uh, for Dragon's rug, rug deck. Flash. Rogue Flash, uh, when you played it, still ran a single copy of one crow card in the sideboard. And it ran the, um, the Snowlands. Yeah, and I remember getting matched up into two Dragon Infinity decks and losing horribly. And then that was all, my, all, that was all the experience with free quotation that I had. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, anyways, Gateways is activating the uh, Heart plus Nariva. Okay, so. draws into infinite cards and also another Beyond All Horizons. Which can find a uh, Monument of Queens. Yeah, I, I, the, hmm. I definitely think you want to Beyond All Horizons flashback Beyond All Horizons, just because it puts a large creature on board that checks the Valdez. Do you even care at this point? Maybe you just want to dig for your win con. I think the only way you die involves Valdez hitting you, but also Valdez needs to hit you seven times to kill you. So never mind, you don't give a shit. Valdez is never going to be active anymore in, in this hand state. Yeah. I mean, actually, uh, so if Gateways wants to go for Beyond All Horizons, they do tap out, right? So Cyber gets a chance to resolve Salome and do stuff with that. I don't know what that does, but something probably. And they're going Come to... On. Sure, just whatever. It, it feels pointless to criticize Gateways' decisions, because I don't think any of them matter. I think all roads lead to Rome and Cyber just loses. Is there any criticizing to do on Cyber's decisions then? Um, I mean, I with, with the information we had, I would have cast the Valda as well. Gateways is tapped out, but I don't know if there was anything that was being played around that wouldn't be played around by doing that. But like, yeah, yeah, I, I, I feel like I did not realize it until we looked at the sideboards. But Cyber just looks horrendous in this matchup. Like this is one of the things, right? Villainy has a weakness to decks going over the top of it because Villainy itself is not a fast win con, and if you're not supplementing it with fast win cons. These decks that are just like I draw arbitrary cards and draw generate arbitrary mana. If you let me get to turn eight, you can't stop them from getting to turn eight. Mm. Um, we saw a board plan fairly similar to what I was describing, except we kept in all three axioms. Oh, yeah, we just I, cut uh, the abandoned by the gods, and did we cut payups? Are we, are we... Oh, that can't, that can't fucking be right. Wait, did we cut payups? We cut pay up. We kept an axiom and not pay up. I, I guess they were extra worried about the random features. Intrepid? We were worried about Intrepid? No, Mimit. They were extra worried about Mimit or something. Well, that's what we have the Anapraxia's endeavors for. I, I guess they wanted a more efficient answer to the Mimit or, than the two-mana one or something. Or, or I guess they just wanted a more efficient creature answer than the two-mana options. I mean, they only have a limited number of piss spells, right? So I guess Exxon is better Wait, where than... are the... Did they take out the piss welts too? They cut the piss welts. Ah. Because it doesn't answer Monument? <laughs> I guess they're hyper-focusing on Monument, then. I mean, I, I agree. I don't know how you build, beat a Monument except for your Endeavors, which cleanly answer Monument. And, like, the answer, the issue with uh, Endeavor is, what if it gets tagged by Counter Magic? But a really good way to beat Counter Magic is to hand attack them with the payups. I guess, like, hand, but hand attack only goes one for one, so you're not going to... In that oh, way, so I guess that's how Cypher's deck works. They go one for one. Oh, uh, I I agree with you on a fundamental level. The issue is that Cypher's playing a one for one and occasional two for one game, and Gateways is randomly casting like six for ones, twelve for ones, and it turns out in a control mirror, if someone's casting twelve for ones and you're not, it's really fucking hard to win that game. I think Cypher just like decided to take the L there and hope for God Hand and Ignatra to win before Gateways 
got anything going off and didn't didn't keep in the payups to do so yeah and d kept a hand that was like five lands yeah yeah you're right i think i think they just could have gotten the god draw off those five lands yeah so, so since the game the foregone conclusion uh do you want to talk about how you think the finals will go no i think that's kind of unreasonable to do in the middle of commentary <laughs> for another game <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you know what the matchup will be like. So, what 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 are your plans for the finals? Um, I'm gonna hope Gateways draws like shit, and I get to be on the play. Aren't you always <laughs> going to be on the play? You have the you have seeds, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Because because you wanted to play out the last round. Like I was just trying to get practice for uh my top eight game against you, and yep. I clearly lost for the exact same reasons that I lost in. You know, I even I think I performed even worse in my uh. A top cut game because I and I forgot triggers. I think I also just like high rolled the shit out of you in the yeah. top cut games. You also, by the way, had better tiebreakers than me uh, pre the top cut pre our pre me beating you. So you would have been <laughs> on the play if we had drawn there. Ah, okay, fine. I, I needed the content. Okay. No, 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 no. I I respect content overall. Uh, I I think MSEM is desperately uh, appreciative. Of all the content you generate, I'm just saying. I think it was technically incorrect to play out our game. <laughs> I think I think we can actually trace that to being a reason that you lost the top eight. Fair. Uh, but, but what exploration? Sure. What what does it do? Oh, there's no good targets. Cyber has not been stocking their graveyard this game. Uh, can Cyber resolve Salome here against you know, Pearl Factor? Still hits it. Yeah, and also you need to keep the, this axiom up because. You have a face-up copy of Monument of Queens that your opponent can dump a million mana into. So maybe this Whisperwoods is just going to grab a second thing that answers Monument of Queens. Or or, and... or if Cyber doesn't hit anything good, they can just put Whisperwoods back into their hand and roll again that next turn. They could actually even roll again this turn. I don't think they want to roll anymore. Like, <laughs> <laughs> If I've learned one thing from playing gotch games, is it's you just need to keep gambling. If you don't stop gambling... You will win everything eventually. Oh, and is. Yep, and is feels pretty good. Uh, don't you already have eggs on though? You'll need an Apraxias right now, right? You need two answers because your opponent. Well, you don't know your opponent has counter magic, but your opponent has counter magic. But you don't know if it's you, you don't actually. Yeah, good point. Pearl fracture doesn't matter because it also hard counters right now. Yep. Uh, my and if, if gateways is playing correctly, they will not draw two cards off Nareba. They will instead put that mana into Monument of Queens. Um. They just, they need to, if they gain, like, four life off a of Monument of Queens, they're in a much better spot versus Valdez, and they can probably just keep that train rolling. I just got disconnected because I timed out. I, I timed out from um, the activity. Cyber chose to reroll. Oh. Uh, well, I, I guess they're doing... And, it, yeah, re recurred it and is casting it again. I mean, so clearly they're a gacha player at heart because they decide to reroll. No, wait, is that something you get to do in gachas? Can we keep it like that? It, it it's really funny because it's, it is really funny. Uh, I would be shocked if we keep it like this. Yeah, but like it it feeds some it feeds your gambling addiction. Okay, see see now they flipped into a villainy and two lands. Like you draw the villainy. <laughs> uh, that I don't think that's the best time to take the villainy. I mean, they don't have they don't have any better bets. They also don't want to leave that in the graveyard because gateways show that they're willing to run. Um, they have sealed the tombs. Yeah, you double fetch. You can activate um, Heart of Zadina and add one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mana to your mana pool. You have the ninth land, but that doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, eight mana. You activate Monument of Queens twice. I don't think you want to activate Nareba. Like drawing cards is good, but even better than drawing cards is killing your opponent. I mean, the other the other thing you could do is. Um, you float nine mana, you cast Delve Treasures, X equals seven, and you probably find a Mastery of the Veil. Gateways so, is thinking. I think those are the two options. It's Delve Treasures for a large number and probably win the game, or it's Money of Queens for two and probably win the game. I think the only incorrect answer here is Nareva. I mean, if I was in Gateways position, I would be tempted to Nareva just because I'm the sort of player that would make those sorts of greedy plays. It's, it's not even a greedy play, it's just wrong. <laughs> It, you know what's better than drawing two cards? It's drawing seven cards. Yeah, but you don't have to use up any cards to draw from the Reba. 
Okay. So technically, you're just wasting the activate. Oh, okay, never mind. Cyber lost. <laughs> uh, I, I, pl please, cyber, just scoop here. This deterministically dead. <laughs> <laughs> We're good. You're gonna keep. You're gonna make them resolve the rest of the fucking Delta <laughs> treasures. Yeah, it's for the content. You're one, two, three, four, five. So wait, we have nine mana, ten mana, eleven mana, twelve mana, thirteen mana, fourteen mana. Cyber is going to take twenty-four fucking damage when gateways untaps. They have no way of stopping that. What are we doing here? Okay, get we sported into celestial banishments. Sure, fine, makes sense, I guess. Yeah, get rid of Mid, Villainy. I think it's just, cool. it's I think it it's just fun to see people resolve Delpha treasures because it's like it's like drafting, right? Maybe maybe I'm missing something. Maybe I'm forgetting that Cyber actually can copy this Delpha treasures and make gateways deck themselves. Maybe that's what I'm missing. Well, it would have to be copied on the same side. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, copy, retain the stuff. Um, using only the cards in play in hand. There's nothing in Graveyard, right? I'm not missing anything? Yeah, I'm not missing anything. There's a bunch of lands in Graveyard right now. There sure is. Thank you, Ricky. These are sorts of insights we need during the last legs of a game. <laughs> there sure is also a lot of non-lands in Graveyard so right now. So maybe you're hoping your opponent forgets that they put Mastery of the Veil in their deck as a way to immediately kill opponents. Maybe, maybe they, that's the play. Yeah, maybe they Biohazard. And, or maybe the opponent tries to BM and then messes up somehow. Yeah, so so your play is that against gateways, a player who has played heart attack several times, including in GP top late top eights, you're hoping and also uh did played it in a team unified constructed event that cyber cyber was not on a team that lost to. But you're you're just saying, yeah, you know what? Maybe my opponent doesn't know what their cards do. Gateways is yeah. just um making sure that <laughs> they have 100 knows, the cards in their hand, knows you have no responses, knows that like are you representing forbidden treasure? Your opponent hand attacked you. What? Even if your hand was forbidden treasure, you you saw your opponent draw a cursory glance. Gateways is asking for. Gateways is making making triple sure that they don't lose to some stupid mistake. I really want to say no one other than Cyber is allowed to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else is outside assistance. <laughs> can can cast this for lethal with double counter magic backup. Uh, maybe I just I really I really need the point to be stressed. How fucking okay? Yeah, no, we double counter match backup because uh we we're overdoing it slightly. But who cares? Who fucking cares? It's over. It's fucking over. The game is dead. Yay! It's over, and it only took an hour. Oh my god! Yeah. So it looks like you'll be facing gateways in the finals. Although yep. we already know that from like I don't know since turn five. Arguably, I think we knew it from sideboarding, but... <laughs> but... <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks for watching, guys. And so if Gateways will make it to finals, and they'll be facing Pipsqueak. Uh, hopefully, we'll be around to commentate the finals. But for now, uh, yeah, that's the game. And we'll see you next time.